What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today and in general, I'm going to start leaning into the jewelry making stuff um, and showing off all the tools that I've made. Um, and more specifically, a lot of the tools that I've made are involved around the, um, <clears throat> the lost resin casting process. Um, I have guess I've realized that not a lot of people do this. A lot of people just uh, outsource to casting houses, which honestly is probably smarter. But... Um, but yeah, this is something that I do all myself. All the whole Lost Rask casting process from designing to final product. So I think that's something I'm going to lean into on this YouTube channel and just in my general jewelry stuff. Because it's a unique thing that I think is really interesting. And I, again, I've made a lot of tools that work really well. And I'm going to hopefully per uh, perfect them to be just casting house quality. So yeah, sorry, my voice is terrible. I just got done being sick. So today I'm going to show off the oven, show you how it works, what I would change if I'm going to build one again, and I probably will be building one again, which I guess is good because I've learned on this one and I can make the next one perfect. But um, yeah, so I have a calibration process that I'm going to do so you can actually see it running and everything and getting red hot. So yeah, let's get right into it. This has probably just scared a bunch of people because it really is really sketchy. And I kind of enjoy how sketchy it is, to be honest. Uh, so basically, it is cement board. I believe that's half inch cement board um, all the way around. I got this door. Let's open it up and I'll show you. It uses fiberglass insulation. And I guess I kind of didn't realize exactly how these ovens work. Basically, insulated fire bricks is what they call it. So I thought, oh, so it insulates. So it probably insulates so that on the outside it's perfectly cool, on the inside it's 1,500 degrees. Not quite. It insulates, but it also gets very hot on the outside. And basically what, uh, what kilns do to counteract that is just have metal on the outside. So it's basically a metal frame around these bricks um, that are stood up on legs like this. And that, that way the heat is fine and it displaces. I kind of thought that you'd want to contain all the heat. And that's not exactly what you want to do. So I had so I, my idea was to use all this fiberglass insulation. And you know what? It does work pretty well. Only problem is it gets... Holding all that heat, it inevitably gets too hot and cracks the cement board. So I have a bunch of cracks... Uh, on the outside, you can tell I added all this aluminum C-channel to help cool things down as a heat sink, and it's working. Oh god, what the f I didn't even notice that. What the fuck? Ah, uh, yeah, see? there's This thing just has problems. And basically, I'm just going to have to build a new one. It, it'll be a little annoying, but basically just have to build it out of all of these and have some weld uh, together an L channel frame for it um, but yeah I didn't even notice that because <laughs> see th this is basically the story of this oven is I get a problem and I just have to fix it I get another problem I have to fix it and it's just become a hassle and I think I just have to cut my losses and just build a new one especially if I'm gonna lean into the casting stuff and this is gonna be my main stuff I wanna have a solid oven I built this for two things for this burnout, investment burnout, and also for a glass blowing project for some kind of invention that I made that I will revisit sometime in the future. The jewelry stuff comes first, but um, so that's why it's so long. And if I were to rebuild it, I would make it taller because it's already kind of hitting the max height uh, and shorter this way, less depth, and obviously out of these entirely with uh, some kind of metal frame this coil um, that's cantle wire I believe it's 16 gauge cantle wire that I bought and made a coil out of you can see that there and it runs with I think that's like 12 gauge wire uh, strand copper wire I have my solid state relay there and a Auber ramp soak PID now I started off and then the, the control box, this turns on the PID, and this turns it on so it gives power to the oven. So I can run the PID without putting any power to that. 
which I would recommend to have two switches. <clears throat> now, this is the PID I started with and we're going to use today to calibrate. And it's not ramp soak, you have to input every value. And that is a disaster. It's just, you have to run down every 10 minutes and readjust um, for the whole cycle, for the whole, the whole burnout cycle. And it's just not viable at all. So I ended up buying the bullet and got one of these ramp soak Auber PID controllers. They're cheaper on Auber's website, it's about 90 bucks. And it's so useful and such a good investment because I could just use this for my next oven that I build. And it basically just lets you program the ramp soak cycle so you could just sit back and let it do its thing. It'll do, you could program it to do whatever you want in terms of the temperature range and then whatever graph you want for a burnout cycle. And it's just great. So I definitely recommend. Um, and yeah, the problem that I, besides the materials I made out of, the other problem that I did uh, was I put the K-type thermocouple too shallow in the box. And now this is a problem that I was wrestling with when I was building this and designing it. Should I have that stick in farther and have it closer to the back? Um, or should I have it in the middle and just stick it in a little? Because in the middle, I can't stick it out too far unless it'll get in the way of the flasks. And I decided to go in the middle and just have it poke out a little, and that was a mistake. Basically with these thermocouples, you're gonna want it at least an inch, probably an inch and a half inside the box. And what this leads, the problem this leads to is the actual temperature is much higher than it reads, about 60 degrees Celsius. Um, so I have to account for that, and it's not great. This whole thing, this whole thing is just kind of a disaster, but I'm making it work. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do today, is we're gonna use my old PID with that other thermocouple that came with it, and we're gonna try to read the actual temperature and hopefully adjust for what we need to adjust. I have, um, that is a fully ready to go flask that has already been burned out and is ready to be cast after it gets up to temperature. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that in, take my other flask and put this in there and then take the thermocouple from this other PID and just lay it in there and we can get to testing. I'll show you my, I've already prepared my data sheet here. Where's my pencil? So, this is an old, some old data from last May where basically I have this heat gun this can measure up to 260 degrees Celsius. I use Celsius just because uh, when you're dealing with super high temperatures like this, I'd much rather have, deal with three digits as opposed to four digits in Fahrenheit. So I just use Celsius because it's easier. Um, now, this is old data. This laser gun only goes up to 260 Celsius, like I just said. The metal thermocouple goes up to 400 Celsius. So I'll be able to get much more data from the thermocouple. Again, this is way, I need to make this higher. The next one has to be higher. And I believe this is fiberglass insulated, so I can just throw this in and it'll be good. I guess just let it sit in there. I think it should be still in there. All right, plugged in. There it is running to there. 13.5. So I have C10 and C11 set at 50 with a time at like 250 minutes, which I hope will be enough. Uh, I think then I could go to set here and I can go to step 10. I think. I believe that'll work. Yes, it looks like it is. Okay. And then I can set them both. Okay, I think this will work. I think this will work. In fact, I could probably just switch that on now. It'll go to 50 degrees. Um, it won't because it stopped. Run. All right. Bang, it's heating up. 
when that light goes on and that light or whatever one, it's heating. And you can also tell that slows down because of all the current draw. So yeah, it's going up now. I, the, because of this thing, I, I like to go up real slow so it doesn't draw too much current. I've had plenty of problems with that. Look at that, it's not correct, it's so bad, it's so bad, but... Well, we're at, it's already at 63, jeez. So yeah, that shows the, that shows the discrepancy right there. Um, and the bottom value, the green value, the set value on this is completely irrelevant. It's, it's, I'm just using it to read the temperature. Alright, I got the fan running, I don't need it for these temperatures, but I just want to make sure it's like, you know, the same as what it's going to be when it's at higher temperatures. So I got the fan running. I'm gonna actually turn it up a little bit um, to get even more airflow. Just yeah, just for a decent test. Um, it takes so long to get the temperatures because I haven't auto-tuned this yet. So I'm just gonna go straight up to 130 after this. So 80. I'll take the reading now. Uh, 80 degrees. 134.7. And let's go up to um, 130. Just straight up. 130. Alright, cool. Wow, so this discrepancy is m more than I even thought. We're at 130 right now. 198. Wow, okay. Well, uh. Let's go to 160, I guess. Yeah, let's go to 160. 160, 227. Oh my god. 191, 260. Four. And I guess we are we are hovering around that 70 degree difference mark. 220, 296. Now we're closer to 80 degrees. This makes me think that the higher it gets, the more the discrepancy is, which is pretty bad. It means the probably the reason why everything's cracking is because the temperature is way more than it should be. Perhaps. I don't know. Let's keep going. 240, 314. Well, 330. 400. That's 70 degrees off exactly. Uh, that's not great. Well, I think we're at the end of the line for this test. I'm at 350. Reads 421. Uh, yeah. We stand there. Let's write that down. 350. 421. Um, I don't really want to push any more. The stated max for that thermal probe, like I said, is 400. I don't really want to push it more than that. Um, so I guess that. It's where this test is going to end. I'll calculate the delta. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let's open this up. I, I also promised you red hot, so I'll show you red hot. And we'll also make sure that thermal couple is still in that uh, flask. Not. I could have asked for better results, but at least we got the results. And I can. I'm going to think. Of, I'll analyze them and think about them, and I'll come back to it tomorrow. But yep, we're definitely still in there. And there you go, that's pretty cool. Maybe we'll get a thumbnail picture. Yeah, it is pretty cool when it's, when it's running. It's a cool thing. And we'll shut this down and just let it cool down naturally. Tomorrow I will analyze this data and we'll see what we get. Alright, it is the next day, I've ran the data through some Excel sheets, and uh, yeah, I mean what we get here, the m most important graph is right here, and that is, it's the X is the just the PV value, the, pro the, set val or the process value, and the Y axis is the delta change from what's set, or what the, what the ramp soak PID is reading to what the other PID was reading which supposedly is the real temperature. Uh, this orange line here is for the old data using the temperature gun. Um, and yeah, and as you can see, the trend is almost the same, which is good. It means the data is pretty good. Uh, and the temperature gun is about 10 degrees lower. It would almost reach 80 degrees difference, which is a lot. But it seems like it dropped off pretty significant around 300 and it seems like it was also doing the same with the temperature gun and it kinda seems like it asymptotes off around 70 now it might not because 
the top, the peak of the burnout cycle is literally about 750 degrees Celsius, which is, I mean, that's really high, and it's a lot different than 350 Celsius, but I don't have any other way to measure temperature past that, so I'm just going to have to trust that it stays around 70 degrees change up at those higher temperatures. Um, but yeah, it, it's a good test, and I'll make that change to... Uh, my calculations here for the burnout cycle. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end this part. Overall, pretty successful. Um, turns out that the, the difference in temperature is even greater than I thought, which I guess is a good thing. It means that I can stamp down the temperature and, uh, you know, it'll put less wear in the oven. So hopefully it'll last longer. I don't know. Overall, pretty successful. I already wrote down a new, uh, to a, just a new little sketch with the new program steps for the Ramso PID. Um, so yeah, I'll hopefully do another uh, uh, casting run soon. I'll probably, you know, I'll probably film it. Um, so I'll make a video of that. If any, again, this is kind of where I'm going to go down, I think, for at this moment in time. So if anybody like has any experience with this, more or less than me, whatever, you know, make yourself known in the comments. It'd be good to get like a little bit of a Maybe you have a community going of people that are doing things like this, lost wax, lost resin casting, and it would be good just to share ideas and stuff. So yeah. Anyways, if you enjoyed that video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to do a lot more stuff with this. I'm going to start some amateur radio stuff. I already have a few videos recorded. Um, and I mean, you may or may not be interested in that. It's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm also going to do a lot more of this and animal shorts, you know, so, yeah, a whole bunch of things, if you like it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.